What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Man Bites Film, not Man Bites Film. Three to the mic. Wow! Wow! That was a retro moment. That was a retro moment. (laughs) Episode maybe one twenty-seven. We're not entirely sure. The the episodes will be called question marks from here on forward. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, as always, I'm your host Brandon. Joining me is the other two idiots. Maybe not as stupid as I am. God knows. I don't know, Lewis. Hey, I got a turkey on my head. You, you yep, do. Yep, I, definitely dumber than you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, and I just finished watching Dude, Where's My Car? Come on. <laughs> oh, God. I haven't seen that movie in, in a hot minute. It's and definitely then. been a while. Oh, my God. Please don't. And, and William. And then. Dude, sweet. Welcome to the show. <laughs> 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 and, of course, it's Zach. I'm Zach. <laughs> it is the Zachary man. Hello, everybody. How's everybody? How was everyone's Thanksgiving? I know we took a break Thanksgiving week, so oh, I worked work straight <laughs> through it. You you worked straight through it? Absolutely. Jesus. I so, it. as I have previously alluded to on this program, I'm directing a digital musical, uh, mm-hmm. Gutenberg the musical, uh, Greenbelt Art Center Online. Check it out, check it out, check it out. And, um, yeah, it's now in the nothing but editing Zach work stage of production. So I am, uh, I bought a neck pillow. That's how like hunched over my computer I've been. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm doing some serious damage, but to on myself a- and my computer. So. On average, how long are you, do you think you're working in a day? It's really hard to tell. Like I, I will step out and be like, oh my God, it's dark now hours have passed like i go into a fugue state um so that's how i spent like thanksgiving how about Zach's you guys like a holiday came through i wasn't aware <laughs> <laughs> um i spent it with family it was a smaller get together than usual but yeah it was nice it was it was good i saw the the grandparents i had gotten tested for covid so i was good first time that i got tested for covid so yo that good. thing goes straight into your brain no, actually, now it's nice. Now they don't do the brain one anymore. Really? Yeah. No, yeah, they do. That's that's what I got when I got tested like a week ago. I didn't. Here Where'd in you Miami. Get? Okay, so they have two tests. So they have if you want like um the rapid the, test. The rapid test, which is what I got. I got my my results in fifteen minutes. Oh, that's like the mouth swab. That's like no, actually, no. That one was a, a Q tip that they stuck up my nose, but just far enough where it tickles. It doesn't hurt. Oh, yeah. okay. And they like twirl it and then they go in your other nostril they twirl it and then they're like see ya no the the i think i've had it i think i've been tested twice maybe thrice and it, it goes yeah up into your eyes and it's hell <laughs> yeah that was my biggest I, fear i was like i really don't want that one dude I, i've done i think this is gonna be the one that i just did on monday was <clears throat> the eighth test i've done jesus wow. christ because of work i'm working yeah. on site so I have to. True. Damn. True. And I can't return to, my to friend. Site. Oh yeah, I haven't been able to return to 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 my job because of that. So I've been working from home all week mm. because I'm waiting for results. Because mm-hmm. I can't do the rapid test. Yeah, it's. I I was very thankful, but dude, within 15 minutes, like the late, they had texted us our results. It was insane. Wow. Yeah, the reason I got tested was because I had come in contact with somebody that they had come in contact with somebody that had it and they didn't know Mm -hmm. and then uh she was very courteous she told us and then i was like yeah i'm gonna go get tested so she came back negative my girlfriend and i came back and had a negative we're good okay congrats yeah thank you thank you how's everyone william and lewis anything special going on on the thanksgivings Eh, i had like three different thanksgiving and jesus (laughs) only only one of them i really had turkey which is completely fine it's fine because um, turkey is the the most subpar bird of all. Um, How dare you! It should have been our national bird. I had an early Thanksgiving. <laughs> I side with parents, Ben Franklin. So it means, like we had like twelve courses. Oh jeez. Um, including mussels and soup. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, I had Thanksgiving here at the house with the girlfriend and her mom, and it was the it was a dairy um, Thanksgiving because you have to remember I live in a kosher household. So uh, we decided to forego the meat and do everything that was dairy-based, which was a lot of fun. Also, because we've been watching baby turkeys grow up 
all year long. So we're like, kind of feel bad, like having helped them grow up, and now we're eating their cousins on the inside. So mm-hmm. we're just gonna forego that. And then I went over to my friend Megan's and had like turkey for the first time. Um, yeah, I'm missing much. I, I mean, I've never I don't had know, turkey just, like, for it's... until this year. Wait, huh? what? I've never had turkey for Thanksgiving what? until this year. Okay, I know where Lewis yeah. is coming with from this because Lewis and I are Hispanic, and we always had like, pork. No, ham. no, in my household it was it was turkey and honeyed ham. Honey ham. That's it. That's all we had on our side. We never ate. We never had Thanksgiving together, though, Brandon. Remember no, that? No, no, no. We didn't. We did not. No, so we true. always. My house was always shredded pork or or the full pig on a spit. Yeah, uh, Cajachina. Yeah, and we used to, there was, used to be this place down in Homestead that, that was actually the first animal I had to kill was a pig, a wild boar that we did. So you thank had God to I'm... jump on behind it and actually cut its neck. I Thank Jesus God. Jesus I'm... Christ. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Thank God I've never had to do that. Never, never spending Thanksgiving with Lewis. And this is why never. Lewis is all fucked up. <laughs> on that note. That, <laughs> that explains so many movies we've had to watch. <laughs> All right, let's go straight into the, the chicken, dude. It, it's like when when uh, William was telling me about the about the the what do you call it, the turkey. I was like, dude, I don't know how many chickens I've killed by just popping their neck out. Jesus, Jesus. you just moving on. <laughs> on that note, speaking of animals, but I I don't I don't know. Hopefully, there's no like animal cruelty in this movie. Uh, <laughs> let's go into it. Spiel binge. <laughs> Spielberg, <laughs> thank God. Let's move. This forward. is where Zach brings one Steven Spielberg movie every week until we finish it. And today is Lewis's favorite movie, and that is Zach. It's War Horse. War Horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh baby, I I know I said I was gonna watch this. I totally <laughs> forgot. Yeah, I did that on purpose. No, it's I totally fine, it. man. It's um Boiler so the first it. the first act really sucks. <laughs> once that being said, once World War One starts, it becomes interesting. It's just the part where the boy and the horse are bonding where it is so so dull. Um I mean, well shot, the music's pretty, whatever, but like story wise, oh dear god, I don't care about horses. Um and <laughs> Then World War One starts, and we introduce Benedict Cumberbatch and um, Tom Hiddleston, and stuff starts happening. I didn't even horse... know Benedict Cumberbatch was in this movie. Yeah, man. What uh, the fuck? Because the horse starts getting like um, passed around from owner to owner, like it travels all through the war. <laughs> passed around. Yeah, and that's. <laughs> I didn't know him in a movie about an exit. <laughs> All I think um, of is uh, chasing Amy when um, this guy's explaining to the little kid. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just like that. No, it's it's more like um, <laughs> Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, but with a oh, horse. Oh my god! So okay, I'm I'm confused since I've never seen it. Is there a main character other than the horse, like the boy? Yes, or the boy, or... the boy. Yeah. Okay. But he goes away for a long time. Which is probably for the best because his storyline was pretty boring. He just like <laughs> is a boy who lives on a farm. He's fifteen and he's on a farm in the third. And Jesus, when was World War One? The teens. Uh, teens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so it's a period piece about being on a farm with a horse, and it's yeah. Um, was this your first time watching War Horse? Uh, no, I have seen War Horse a couple of times. I saw it when it first came out. I saw it. Um, I have a distinct memory every year um, prior to this year, obviously. I mm-hmm. would go into DC. There was um, a theater that would do a 24 hour marathon of all the movies that are nominated for Best Picture. Wow. Okay. Um, and so I, me and my best friend, we'd go uh, every year and we'd spend a full day watching movies in this theater. And it is the best day of the year. Um, and I distinctly remember the 2011 Oscars. Uh, because the air conditioning crapped out around like two in the morning when they were showing War Horse. So they oh. moved us all into the IMAX theater so that we could breathe. Uh, so I have seen War Horse <laughs> in IMAX. <laughs> um. Oh boy. Uh, Lewis, um, is this the movie that made you hate horses? It's one of the many, yes. No, okay, but is this the one that broke the straw that broke the camel's back? <laughs> That's what she said. 
Or uh, it's but... the one that just glued, glued it all together. <laughs> it took me four uh, sittings to watch this one time. Because, four sittings? Yeah, because I kept, I literally kept falling asleep. And I don't fall asleep during movies. There's, I could name them with my fingers on my hand. How many movies? My I fall fingers. Asleep. <laughs> and, dude, I literally walked out after the third time that I fell asleep in the movie. And I'm like, can I get a refund? I've literally watched maybe about 10 minutes of this movie. Because I was in the theater. I, I don't know. I don't hate it. I don't love it, certainly. But, and it's really the first act that's the problem to me. But the, the subsequent two, I'm really down with. So it's, I'm it's sure. Just, oh, yes. It's just boring because like, they're on a farm and it's just them. Like... It's a farm-based period piece about a boy bonding with a horse. It's as interesting as that sounds. Yeah, he was awesome. a boy, lived on a farm. <laughs> I have to be now, yes. So I do, I, um, how do I explain this? So like, um, so like the thing where like, I'm a vegetarian, but I love McNuggets as a concept. Like, it's kind of that thing where like, I aesthetically love that War Horse exists. You know what I mean? Like, okay. it's such a great variable. I don't actually love War Horse, but War Horse exists, and that's wonderful. Okay. Um, I'm sure I've told this story before on the show, but I did a one-man show uh, that I wrote. <laughs> and um, have I, are you laughing because I've told this before? I think you, you've told this before. I, this sounds oddly familiar, so I, I think so, yeah. I wrote in a joke about War Horse, and... Yes. Yes. All through rehearsals, it got laughs. We finally put it on its feet in front of an audience, and no one responds. Yeah. So then I'm like, does no one remember War Horse? (laughs) So I turned it into me describing War Horse until I got the laugh. And on one night, um, it didn't get the laugh initially. Then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. War Horse is based on the Tony winning play. It's a Steven Spielberg film, whatever. And I start describing it. There's still no laugh. So I wind up improving a monologue about War Horse for like three minutes. And then everybody is like begrudgingly clapping for it. And I'm like, yes, clap for War Horse. Um, So I, I do. I have a very special bond to this movie. The IMAX experience, the experience of being the only person who remembers this movie. Um, The, that, monologue making an audience clap for war horse i mean like i yeah war horse man so is it like aesthetically like a nice well, it's a beautiful shot movie movie it's yeah, beautiful yeah movie now okay so the thing that is weird is that a lot of it is lost in translation it's based on a play and okay. the play is famous for having this like really intricate puppet work the horse okay. is played by six people and it's like operated as this like massive puppet and it's like really groundbreaking uh tech that they use and that's the reason that war horse is an interesting play if you did war horse without the puppet it would not be interesting and this was war horse (laughs) without the puppet so it's not interesting anymore um so that's that's the big problem is that they they literally translated it and it lost so much in doing that gotcha so what um like, where would you put this in the, from what you've seen so far of the filmography? <laughs> uh, lower tier? Definitely lower tier. Um, I put it about on par with, like, um, <laughs> some of the other ones I didn't really, like, care for, but didn't make me want to kill myself, like Color okay. Purple or Amistad or whatever. Okay. Where it's just like, this is well made. I don't hate this, but, like, I wouldn't put this on. It's just, it's very sentimental. It's very, I don't really care for period pieces as a rule. Um, Like you really have to do something special in order to make me not fall asleep looking at your pretty costumes. Um, And yeah, this, it's, I mean, five and a half, six. I got the movie that I'm going to, I'm going to make you watch. Five and a half. I think it's perfect for you. Okay. I think you'll really enjoy it. I'll send you the title and I want to hear your feedback on this one. Okay. You it's a funny, Stanley like, Kubrick masterpiece. Oh, are we talking about uh, Barry Lyndon? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? I have seen the middle half hour. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird, man. It it keeps me awake. It's um, That's the type of period piece that I dig. I liked uh, Greta Gerwig's uh, Little Women because that was weird. Okay. I, I like that movie, too. Um, uh, the Favorite because that was weird. Uh, it's just these like big, sprawling king speech look at our costume dramas where yeah. I'm just like, oh guys, you know, 
It's like Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, Pride shit. and Prejudice so, I cannot get through. So are you like a fan of The Crown on on Netflix and all that shit? Or? Can't get into it. Can't wow. get into it? Mm. I appreciate all the actors on it, all the work that goes into it. I'm yeah. a fan of that writer, but like... Can't get into ah. it. Anything? Okay. I mean, like, I can't really get into it. Like, I've watched a few episodes with Samara because she was into the crown. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, like, this season because, like, it's oh, yeah, Diana. lived through now that they're bringing in Princess right. Diana and Charles yeah. and everything else. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this season. Uh, once she's done with school, we're going to binge watch it. Um, so we will see how if, if it turns around. But I okay. So yeah. the one-man show that I was talking about earlier was uh, called I'm Margaret Thatcher, I Is. <laughs> and it was uh, me playing Margaret Thatcher with like a disgusting Cockney accent, and it had no historical research behind it. Uh, it was just me guessing what probably happened in British history. Oh um, my lord! And so I, when this new season of The Crown dropped, and I saw like Gillian Anderson was getting such praise for her portrayal of Thatcher, I was like, I could have done it better. <laughs> 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 no, I, I have a role in common with Gillian Anderson and Meryl Streep, so. So you gave it a five and a half. Uh, yeah, Lewis, five and a half, six. It's fine. It's fine. Lewis, uh, what do you give? I would a two. Uh, I was gonna say zero. No, you won't give a zero, right? No, no. I mean, okay. it is. It is a beautiful, beautifully aesthetic film. I will definitely give the cinematographer credit where where it's due, and that's that's what makes this movie actually better than it is. And it's the only reason I probably wouldn't give it a zero is because it is beautifully shot. So I will definitely have to give that. All right. And the music is is fantastic. Oh, it's yeah. It's just the story is boring as fuck. That's what I'm saying. Once the war starts, though, and I hate war movies, so this is a very low bar for me. But, like, <laughs> it's a period piece and a war movie, so it has huge hurdles to jump over, and it's very sentimental and about a horse. Um, but, like... Once it start, once action starts happening, that's cool. The battle scene where they they raid the the Germans and they think that they're like surprising them, and then spoilers, they're not. That's a cool sequence. Um, there's some cool stuff that goes on. It's yeah, it's just a mediocre film. It's yeah, mediocre, it's mediocre. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what is the? Uh... Oh, actually, before that, uh, do you want to plug anything, Zach? Plug I do. I talked about it earlier, but Greenbelt Art Center Online is doing Gutenberg the Musical, which I am directing and editing. Um, it's a musical comedy uh, where uh, two people are pitching you their musical that they wrote about the invention of the printing press. Oh, um, my God. And it is, it's really, it's... Um, it's something. It's I'm, I'm throwing everything I got at this. It's very DIY homemade weirdness. Um, we used green screens for the first time in a project of mine. This is my first oh. experience with green screen. Interesting. Um, oh, so you're doing wild. chrome keying and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That... But like, I'm going for like that tacky kind of look. Like, I want it okay, to be good, camp. Good, 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 good. Um, God, man, you're such a talented son of a bitch compared to us, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Like, please please check this show out so that my weeks of work are not for nothing <laughs> <laughs> all right and of course what is the next movie on... i'm trying to look at my shelf i think it's lincoln it is lincoln yes. it's lincoln i am a fan of lincoln i'm really excited for this <laughs> oh yay okay, so zach do you want to combine the bfg and bridge of spies how do you mean like the do you want to do it in one episode bfg and bridge of spies yeah, or Bridge of Spies and Lincoln, because they're both historical picks. Oh, true, 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 true. I don't know. It really depends on how much time I have when I'm done with the show. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, and of course, uh, stay tuned after this quick break when we come at you with Pop's Corner. See you And of hell. course, Spill Binge. Spill Binge. Spill Binge. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back for Pops Corner and then in parentheses S. Corners, maybe. 
Depends so, on the day. You call it the war. We're going to be getting different corners this week. <laughs> um, so, I know we're going to have like a whole section, so I'm not going to start with a death, although there is a death involved in this week. Yes, oh, um, man. Is two there? things. One, yeah. a super hit that's on Netflix Ooh. right now. It's called Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. Um, it's Ooh. actually really good. Not a lot of people are talking about it. It stars um, Forrest Whitaker. Uh, and that's probably it's, why. It's, uh, it's kind of like, it's got like, obviously Christmas music in it, but you also have Ricky Martin. You have- Ricky Martin is in this? Yeah, Madeline Mills is in it. <laughs> uh, Anika Rose, Felicia. That Rochelle. says it all. A really good, solid cast. I know that it's being overshadowed by the Christmas Chronicle 2, which is great. The movie, the sequel is okay. I still like the first one. But first one was b- great, man. We this, one was great. this one just seemed like very far. Like, obviously, the first one's far-fetched, but this one's even more so, and I was just kind of like... Mm, okay. Eh. Um, plus, also, like... I like the kid that was in Deadpool 2. I liked how he was, but... Like he, you can see him struggle against the likes of you know Santa and Mrs. Claus in this movie. It's like, oh okay, like are, are you like literally just like reading your lines while you're doing this? Movie? <laughs> but there's Jingle somebody Jingle. with like a cue card in the back with the lines on it, right? Um, but Jingle Jangle at Christmas Journey is actually a sleeper hit. Check it out; you will love it. It's fun for the whole family. Um, so do that. Uh, staying on to Netflix, and this is something that's. Um, came out literally, no pun intended, yesterday, Alan Page of Juno, oh, yeah. but also now of Elliot Page, uh, yeah. the Umbrella Academy fame, has come out as trans and is now Elliot Page. So um, I wanted to extend a, a congratulations to him for coming out and taking this step. Uh, we know it, like, we can only fathom how hard it is but uh, it seems to have been welcomed by all sorts of fandoms. Uh, his wife has also come out in solidarity, obviously. Uh, I didn't even IMDb, know that he was married. Yeah. Um, IMDb, uh, Google, Netflix, they were all very quick to change uh, his pronouns because now he goes by him and they. Yeah, he. They. Also, uh, uh, they they said that they're not going to change his uh, role on the on Umbrella Academy playing. Um, what's her? Uh, fuck, man, what's her name? The I'm character's sure. name. Like, I've only. I need to catch up on Umbrella Academy. I started season two, but I, I'm still not a hundred percent well versed on the names. But uh, if you haven't seen it, but you've only seen pictures, it's the character that's playing the violin. Yeah. Um, well. Which, his yeah, that character is not going to be changed. Yes, uh, like they, it will. St- it will be like he Elliot will still be playing that character on Umbrella Academy. Yeah. So it's the character in all season one didn't think Vanya. That's her name. And all of a sudden, they find out that they have like all these like powers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So congratulations to them. Now we're gonna do, <laughs> dive into what's going to be the biggest part of the segment for this week. Uh. The first part of the sad news is always, unfortunately, uh, David Prowse, who uh, played Darth Vader in the Star Wars movie. Not the, actor, not, not the yeah, voice. Yeah, not the voice, the actor that played actor, Vader. Um, More importantly, Vader. he was the muscle man from Clockwork Orange. Come on. Yes, he was, was that yeah, too. He was more popular in that role than Darth Vader. Come on. Yes, because we all remember him to be the muscle man from that one movie versus being Darth Vader from those seven movies. But uh, (laughs) (laughs) apparently, according to his daughter, he passed away of COVID-19. So he did? It was uh, was COVID? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? I didn't know that. So thanks for that, COVID. Uh, Fuck you, 2020. Um, And now we need to talk Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 5. I still haven't watched a single season. I, I can see the smile on Brandon's face. Uh, so in episode three, there was a huge name drop, which having oh. not seen Rebels didn't really, like, it went right over my head until I started watching reaction videos on YouTube. And I was like, oh, that's where the name dropped. And then we finally got to see her on screen Nobody was expecting it to be like in the first 10 seconds of the episodes. But again, if you watch reaction videos on YouTube, 
Un- it's amazing. It's kind of like when Arya Stark killed the white, like the, the, the yeah, the, yeah, the Night King, the, the, the Night King, or you know, Holy. like all those other things. Spoilers. Obviously, yes. There's going to be spoilers from <laughs> spoilers. So skip, skip my the rest of my segment if you don't want anything look, spoiled because we're going to dwell into this there's no way I was going to hold that back from Brandon look, this one and be like we're not going to talk about this because okay. Of Star Wars. okay I was blown away by episode 3 when Bo-Katan came in I was like holy shit this is incredible she name drops Ahsoka and then something happened that I absolutely fucking hate and it is called the goddamn internet. So, I was completely surprised by episode three. I did not know that Bo Katan was going to show up. I did not know that they were going to name drop Ahsoka, blah, blah, blah. And then it all started popping up in the internet. People were like, oh, Dave Filoni's directing and writing episode five. For sure, Ahsoka's going to show up in episode five. So, I already had that, like, that preconceived notion in my head already. So, as soon as she showed up, I'm like, cool. There was something lost with me, unfortunately. I was really excited to see her on screen. And also, nothing against Rosario Dawson. She just doesn't have the same uh, demeanor that Ashley Eckstein, who is the voice of Ahsoka. She's been the voice of Ahsoka since they introduced her 12 years ago. She is now. incredible as a person, dude. I I've met her a few times, and she is such a nice person, dude. Are we talking about Rosario or no? Um, Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. Yeah. yeah. Nothing against Rosario Dawson. Again, she's a she's a phenomenal actress. It's just I unfortunately associate Ahsoka with Ashley because Ashley has made that character who she is, and there's just a disconnect. Rosario cannot. She can try. Like she won't maybe like Ashley didn't have a physicality to be able to pull off what Rosario. Yeah, that's probably it. Maybe Ashley is not a physical actress. Like she she prefers to do voice acting, so maybe she just wasn't, you know, or like what you said, maybe body wise they were like, Oh no, you you don't. Also, like des- design wise, where the Mandalorian takes place, which is right at like well, it's kind of in the gray area right now. Filoni hasn't said if this takes place after Rebels or at the same time as the Rebels finale. But um, Ahsoka's headdress, like her her like things on her head, are supposed to be longer. Like, so this might be... be her younger. No, no, no. It's her. <laughs> it's just that they fucked up on her design in the sense that like her. I don't know how to explain it. You know those things that the Twi'leks yeah, have on their yeah. head? Yeah. Uh-huh. They're supposed to be longer. Like, if you look at Ahsoka in the finale down of to, Rebels. Like, their waist, right? Yeah, like, hers are super long because she's, like, in her 40s. I'm I'm wondering if... Because, like, apparently, like, uh, Favreau likes to do a lot of non-CGI stuff. Yeah. And I'm wondering That's if probably was why. not was able to, with the choreography and the movement that she has, if it just... I, getting in the way and i yeah i assumed it was like they couldn't do it or the, maybe they tried it with cgi and they were like this does not look good so they just decided to stay with it aesthetically this though this is why it doesn't work in porn <laughs> <laughs> aesthetically <laughs> though that episode was incredible like the whole, not like, always better <laughs> the whole japanese aesthetic like feloni decided to basically do homage do an homage to like uh akira kurosawa and all that yeah. shit yeah um, yeah yeah, like it's a it's a great episode, and uh, cool things are shown. You know, like we we find out that the that Beskar is like immune to lightsabers, like lightsabers will not cut it. So that's definitely probably going to come into play later when Mando fights um, Moff Gideon with the dark saber and all that bullshit. I still haven't uh, watched this. How are you but... with the name drop of the Grand Admiral Thrawn? Oh, that shit was fucking amazing. I was like... There it is. <laughs> that shit was amazing because literally... Okay, I've said it on the show, or I don't know if I've said it on the show. I'm more of a fan of Rebels than I am Clone Wars. That doesn't mean that Clone Wars is not a fantastic show. I just prefer Rebels. And when Rebels ended, I immediately wanted a sequel because... Uh, do you care if I say spoilers? Uh, no, we're, we're in a spoiler. We're in a okay spoiler yeah. in 
segment at this point. So. At the end of Rebels, um, Ahsoka goes with Sabine, which is another Mandalorian that's also main character in Rebels, and they are trying to search for Ezra Bridger, the main character of Rebels, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yep. So I want that, and maybe... I don't know. Maybe we'll get the, the answers in The Mandalorian. I would prefer a fucking show, like an animated show. Well, there, there is a spinoff called Jedi that has been announced, so we may oh, be getting it into that. I don't know, but we'll see. Like, we'll see what happens. It was cool. Like, I liked the episode, but unfortunately, because of the internet, I already kind of had a uh, an idea well, you don't that read anything. I know, man. It's just fuck, man. It's so hard. It's like a wee different though, because like I, I passively watch Mandalorian. Like I wake up Friday mornings and I watch it because I don't want any spoilers on Facebook Same. later that day. Same. Um, but I also don't read like different forums and whatnot. So I actually did not know that she was going to be in this episode, and I knew who she was, but obviously I didn't have like that much involvement from Rebels because I. Yeah. Never- Rebels, but I was definitely happy to see her. I was like, "Oh my Dude, god!" Rebels is by far the best Star Wars. Um, like that. Yeah. Oh my god. Also, there is a new Lord. Star Wars Christmas special. It's a Lego yes. Christmas special that's mm-hmm. on Disney Plus. If you guys want to watch that, it's actually really cute. It deals with time travel, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I need to watch it. I've heard it's actually really good. Yeah, it's it's like maybe like forty minutes long, but it's actually really good, and it's, a, yeah. it's really funny. Yeah. Um. So two last things about episode five of Mandalorian. One, obviously, we have the name drop of Baby Yoda, which yes. is Grogu, mm-hmm. which, I mean, it's going to take a little adjusting to. I'm still going to call it Baby Yoda. Dude, but that's I think Grogu. I think of one of two things, either Roku <laughs> or Goku. I That's never going to catch on, dude. I, I just feel like people nope. are just going to refer to it as Baby Yoda. Really like the I mostly call it the child or the baby, but I, I actually like the name the child. There's just something so just clean about it. I don't know. Um, I would have been okay if they never gave him a name. And the other little bit of information, which not a lot of people know, um, the what was the name of the lady that she, that that uh, Ahsoka it's, ended up fighting? Uh, the magistrate or some bullshit. The magistrate, yes, yeah. So the magistrate was played by Diana Lee Inosanto. Okay. And a lot of people are like, all right, that's cool. Um, no biggie. But Diana Lino Santo is actually the direct granddaughter of Bruce Lee. And the oh, episode cool. dropped on what would have been Bruce Lee's 80th birthday. Oh, that's so, neat. I thought it was kind of cool. Like, just a little, you know, it's not really Star Wars related, but I thought it was kind of cool. Like, that, you know, on his birthday, we see his granddaughter. She's obviously doing, and she's done like other stuff as well. Um, but I heard this and I wanted to double check because, you know, what you read on Facebook doesn't mean it's news, but when I double checked on it, it was actually true. So, um, we only have three episodes left of Mandalorian. We will see, like, obviously if you watched episode four, you know that he's being tracked, that, uh, there's hopefully going to be a final battle or a big battle oh, for sure. by episode eight, um, is there any other characters from like either Rebels or Clone Wars that you would love to like just pop up live action in Mandalorian that you'd be like, it, oh it my really, god, this is great. Not it, Anakin Skywalker, obviously. It'd look really goofy, but I would love to see fucking Zeb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would love to see Zeb. That look that would be so fucking goofy though. I I doubt they would do that. That would look- um Ezra. Honestly, show me what has happened to him. He has to I want up. I want to know, dude. But um Whatever. yeah, that is pretty much all I have, but I figured that you'd get a good kick out of it this week oh, yeah. given like how much stuff happened. I'm I kind of I kind of this. fucking took your segment over for a little bit. I saw I'm sorry. But, but that's I was I was completely ready for that because I'm like this is going to be very in depth and it's going to be totally okay. <laughs> I totally can see uh episode 6 being like a sleeper, just kind of like a filler. Yeah. More than yeah. this, sorry, and then seven literally like leading up to episode eight, and oh, then yeah. episode eight just like for sure, for here sure, we go. Sure. Um, because there's so many, there's so many loops that we need to close. Like we saw Baba in episode one, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you know, we yep. he's being followed. So I'm hoping the next three episodes we're gonna get like you know, boom, 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 like Merry Christmas. Here you go. <laughs> that is all that I have for this week. Uh, I felt like there was a lot. 
But uh, we will see what uh, next week brings, and hopefully nobody more, you know, nobody will pass away. But- hopefully. All right. Uh, stay tuned to this quick message when we come at you live with the, fi- the final, the main segment of our show, my pick, Children of Men. All right, guys, welcome back for the main segment of our show live. My pick, Children of Men, uh, which is streaming on Peacock. Peacock? Peacock. Uh, directed by Alfonso Cuarón. Cuarón. Uh, so this is the first time. Director. <clears throat> yes. He did. He did. Uh, this is the first time I'd watched this movie. I've heard very good things of it, of course. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is actually one of the main reasons I picked it. Um, oh, it was well, based on a book. Come on. Yeah. So Children of Men uh, stars... My man, fucking uh, Clive Owen, he lives in uh, t- in in England in 2027, and basically he lives in a world where it's gone to shit for the last like I think it's what 18, 19 years. Not a single woman has uh, been pregnant, has gotten pregnant. So all sort all society around the planet is like in this like fucking free fall. Uh, they never explicitly say it, but I'm pretty sure the United States is just crap. Yeah. Uh England is one of the few countries in in the world that has a government but that it's still like a police state and it's really fucked up. Uh they basically put refugees in in fucking like cages and like kill them and shit. It's fucked up. So I, it's actually they actually expand a little bit more in the special features. They have like a whole documentary, oh, really? like a mockumentary. Okay. About That's what cool. happened. Wow. That's actually really neat. That that's actually one of my 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 fa- like my most um like things about this movie was, was the world. I wanted to know more like what the fuck had happened. Like at the beginning of the movie this guy the the youngest man in the world. I think he's yeah. like 18 or 19 years old. Basically he was born right before uh the pandemic. So they they talk about this pandemic that happened that basically stopped women from having children. And he dies and the entire world has like stopped for this kid and then now that and then after he dies the 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 announcer at one point is like and the next youngest person is blah 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 and she is 18 years old <laughs> da, 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 and it's like holy shit so basically the movie is uh clive owen is um transporting this girl i don't know if you want me to go further than that yeah let's let's give a little bit more okay uh yeah basically he um He's like uh, tracked down by his like ex-wife, who's like this basically a lack of a better word a terrorist, uh, and she is uh, trying to transport this young girl who is pregnant. Yep. Who is the first girl to be pregnant in eighteen years? And then it's basically different ideologies. Like Clive is like this is going to be good for mankind, and then. The fishes, which is basically the terrorist organization, are kind of using. They want to use the baby as like a way of, uh, you know, use it for their own benefit instead of like for the betterment of mankind and blah 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 and all that shit. So yeah, it's basically the movie. That's. Um, I'm actually curious to see what uh, William has to say because I know you, when I picked it, you were like, I've tried or like I've watched this movie before, and I just find it really um, slow. I actually did not feel that at all. Um. So I kind of changed my opinion about this movie. Okay. Because um, I've grown since last seeing the movie and mm-hmm. learned to appreciate. Um, I've learned to appreciate this movie from a filmmaker standpoint more than just a sit back and watch it. Uh, story wise, it's not it's not a bad story. It's to me, it's been well now it's been done before. You know. Yeah. It's, you know, a future apocalyptic style world and there's, you know, hope is found that we will get back to how things were, which is very 2020. Um, But just looking at like the long shots that they have, like, especially like the opening scene where basically it's just like one long shot and it's almost seen from like another person that's following him. Uh, and and you can see like what this futuristic, which is only like seven years from now, uh, London looks like. 
Yeah. And you know, then there's the explosion and everything else, but like you're you're like you're brought into the movie like right away. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um how the camera at times like it's following the main character and it's kind of like if we were following the main character and one of us had like ADHD and it's like a handicap like, right uh, it's like 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 the like what's that shit that they put like that vest that carries the cam yeah yeah it's a steady cam a steady cam they're like, like steady cam but it's, it's very much to like requiem for a dream um, yeah 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 those shots were actually shoulder cams they weren't even steady cams it was shoulder cam because the director literally wanted to be like it look like you are following him mm. and therefore like you will see at times like the camera kind of like shakes kind of like you're walking and you're not like you know always steady yeah and then like you look to the left and you look to the right it almost feels like you are in a video game and you're like look panning the camera and you see what's going around like yeah. You gotta watch this movie more than once because like the first time that you watch it it's like you're obviously paying attention to what's going on in front of you but then if you Watch it again, just looking at the background. There's so much more happening in the background that you don't pick up the first time around. You're like, mm. it's Alfonso Cuaron, really well done. Alfonso Cuaron is definitely one of those directors that he he manages to skillfully tell a story and skillfully use his camera and editing techniques throughout the film, but it doesn't come off pretentious with the exception of like Roma and stuff like that. Yeah, but like yeah. his his mainstream films are beautifully shot and he has that that very much like uh like Spielberg where he's able to to do cinematic yet beautiful and well done stories out of the Harry Potter series he, his My, film is the best one did, did you guys catch the subtle masterpiece artworks that were sprinkled throughout the movie that if you really are not paying attention you don't catch them what do you mean by that? Because, um, like, for example, when we first see, uh, what's her name? The the, the girl that's pregnant, Key. Uh, Key. When we first see Key, she's standing with her hand across her breast and her hand covering uh, yes. her vagina. Yes, like Venus. True, yeah. very true. I didn't notice that when yeah, they are point. leaving the the, the barn building, yeah. and there's the lady on the ground holding her dead husband is very reminiscent of Mary holding Jesus after he's been crucified. Um, that's, that's why I, I didn't notice the that. And when they're like walking through the guards, and it's him holding her, and she's got you know she she's like cradling. Mm-hmm. It's like reminiscent of like Mary and Joseph holding baby Jesus. You know, that's actually my favorite scene in the movie is when they're walking yeah. through all the guards, and everybody's just looking at them because it basically it's the first child, newborn child that they've seen in 19 years, and it's that beautiful moment of like maybe shit will be okay. And then immediately everything just goes back to shit and someone shoots a rocket and then it's like everyone's shooting at each other again. And it's just, it, I don't know, for me it was like, it was like that one moment where it was like, oh man, maybe things will be okay. And it's like, nah, human beings are just fucked. And then they I, just go back to fighting each other. I love though how it gives you that, it gives you that hopeful feeling of humanity, but it's also very, it takes it away right in that same second. Yeah, exactly. So, a very, it, it's yeah. very true to life, I think, when it comes to that. Because it's like, you always want to have hope for humanity that, that people will do good. And then, usually most of the time, you're disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's... I also love how how accurate this story actually is. How, how what do you call it? Something like this could actually happen. Don't, where... I- there's already in China one of the the fertility um processes that they were actually doing was a virus that would stop you and completely disintegrate your insides so you Sick. would not be able to to have Sick. a child so man I, or woman that's the that's my main thing about this movie bro it's like it's like things like this I just want to know more about the world yeah I want to know what happened I want to know like other countries like how are other countries taking what's going on you know um but i I very much enjoyed the movie i I thought it was it was well paced it was definitely like kind of like white knuckle at moments um i never i never knew that i i wanted and needed michael kane with long hair and and is a hot addict in my life michael kane is fantastic in this movie by the way yo 
that scene when he basically, you know, like stays behind to like give them time. Oh man, I felt yeah. so bad for him. I was like, my brother, dude. I I think he was amazing in this movie. So he really I, is, dude. I definitely give this movie a nine out of ten. I, I'm so glad William Same. turned around on it. I am too. I am too. I was like, damn, dude. Like again, I'd never seen it, but I was like, I've heard very good things about it. I. I think you even brought up this movie at one point on the podcast. At one point, I remember you talking. I, I reviewed it way back when. That's what it was. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Because I love this movie. This is one of like Alfonso Cuarón is definitely one of those directors that I'm, I'm following closely. His career. Yeah, he it's it's good, and like everybody in the movie is. He hasn't like, disappointed yet, yeah. and he has a very wide spectrum too. Yeah, so, I don't know if you've seen his other films that that he's directed. Yes, I have. Um, I yeah, have. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like he, he directed a little princess. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Really? Yeah, and also Holy Gravity, shit. which I'm not a fan of Gravity, but I could appreciate. And yeah. Itumama también. Yeah, Itumama también. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great one. Itumama también fucking hit me hard. I was not expecting it to go the way that he did, and then I was like, "Fuck this movie!" Like, not in a bad <laughs> way, but I was like. Fuck you, movie. I thought it was going to, like, I went in thinking it was going to be a completely different thing than it was. And I was like, <laughs> God damn, that hit me. And I was not, I was not ready. So uh, what do you, what do you give uh, Children of Men, William? Um, I give it a good nine out of ten. Woo! Yeah. Damn, nine, 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 nine across the board. I, baby. I, I went nine. in probably, I was, I went in get, ready to give it like a five. So I definitely bumped up four little, four notches. Um, because again, I watched it more from a, okay, I know what the story is now. Let me mm-hmm. see the film standpoint. So those yeah. notches are the COVID notches. <laughs> 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 well, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed my pick and that you turned around. It's, it's nice to hear us all speak nicely about a movie. It's, I know, it's right? Good. It's been a while. I know it makes me feel all fuzzy inside. Lewis, what do you give it? Four. He gives it a four. No, he he said nine. nine. We all gave it oh, nine. Okay. Nine, oh, nine, nine. 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 All right, guys. Stay tuned at this quick break when we come at you with my segment, Brandon's joystick. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back for my segment, segment Brandon's Joystick. Uh, oh, I, um, I finished uh, Ask Creed Origins. Ask Creed? Oh, Wait, what? No, what? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Ask Creed. I was Ask Creed. I, that's how I, I refer to Assassin's Creed. I just say Ask Creed. Uh, Ask Creed Origins, I finished the <laughs> base game and the, the two DLCs, including... Which, if you haven't played, William, the Pharaoh DLC, the Curse of the Pharaohs. Yep. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, basically, for Lewis and for anybody that has not played it, you get to go into like uh, different parts of the afterlife according to like Egyptian like mythology and shit. So it's really cool. Like they go to like purgatory and like the afterlife. It's it's really neat. And uh, I started Odyssey. The, which is the sequel now now i'm in ancient greece i'm liking odyssey a lot i like the gameplay way more in odyssey than i did in origins it feels so much better of the three um origins odyssey and valhalla um odyssey is my favorite gameplay uh yeah like i'm it i'm took a lot of way in valhalla that I've did you who bought. did you choose in odyssey i'm playing as cassandra did you choose Alexios or Cassandra? I, I chose Alexio in Odyssey, but I'm playing as the female now in Valhalla. Okay. That's a shame, man, because I read that Cassandra, which is the female version she's in, in Odyssey, is way better than Alexios. And she's like super uh, just sassy, and I like it. And I'm like, yeah, bro, give me the sassy. I mean, like, you get the same gameplay in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. like. Uh, the people have said, and I don't know if Ubisoft has actually confirmed it, that Cassandra is actually the canon of. Oh, Cassandra. I didn't know that. Yeah, that yeah. like the, between the two, it's actually follows the girl. So yeah, so I, I've been playing that. I'm like ten hours in, like ten, eleven hours in. I'm I'm liking it. 
Uh, it definitely feels like a way bigger game than Origins is. It is. Yeah. Um, so... Do yourself a favor, go on YouTube because I don't remember how to do it. Um, you have to be a certain level. I think it's like either 20 or 50. By... <laughs> That's quite a range of levels. <laughs> I, I want to say it was 20. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it's underwater, but go find yourself Poseidon's Trident. You Trust me. You will beat people's asses without oh yeah what about it so it's it's cool i like it i like the whole mythology um you know egypt is cool greece is cool i'm i'm i I like it man it's scratching an itch that i didn't know i had but i i'm 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 on board i also have been playing i'm terrible at them god the older i get my reflexes are ass uh i i have been playing mega man i don't know if you guys are a mega man hell yeah games I love Mega Man games, but they're hard as fuck. Those yeah, games kick your Mega ass. <laughs> like, they legit kick your ass. Uh, and I just bought for like 10 bucks. I bought Mega Man 11 and Mega Man X Legacy Collection, which comes with Mega Man X 1 through 4. I'm I'm having a great time, but man, those, those games are like, bend over, bitch. I'm going in dry. <laughs> it's like playing, what was it? Uh, Shinobi? Back. Yes. Like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. It's I like a man, it's but the Dark Souls of our time. <laughs> <laughs> See, I never knew you liked Mega Man, Lewis. That's that's interesting. I I used to love that series, dude. I have it on the on the classic NES. Yes. yes. I have it on there. I have I think the first two. I want to say. Yeah, on the on the the SNES classic. I think, or sorry, the NES classic. I think it's Mega Man one and two that come on it. I don't think it's three on there, but I, I'm I'm positive one and two are on there. Yeah, one and two. But I'm talking about the ones the the one that I bought the X Legacy Collection is the ones that were for the Super Nintendo. So they're a little bit different. Like Mega Man can like climb up walls, like he can like slide. Yeah. And like climb up walls and shit. That's when they introduced Zero, the red guy with the sword. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I I'm having that in the arcades, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the, at the what do you call it uh, Hot Wheels on Friday nights Hot and they used wheels. to do uh, what do you call it um, party nights Holy oh shit. dude yeah so we used to I'm go there beforehand and play the arcades Mortal Kombat and that and then and then we'll drink outside get some 40s and then try to skate <laughs> get some 40s get fucked up and then skate yeah that was my um, middle school years dude <laughs> you were drinking 40s in your middle school I don't even want to know dude who cares <laughs> Um, last thing I wanted to bring up on my segment, this is not video game related. So as I've been mentioning on the show, I am slowly but surely progressing through one piece. Still got a while to go, but I'm, I'm, I'm making progress, but I started another long ass show. I don't know why I did this to myself. I'm having a blast with it. And that is supernatural. Oh, geez. (laughs) I'm on season three and I'm having a blast with the show. Oh god! Oh, holy why? fuck! I'm like, dude, there are still 12 seasons after this that I need to watch. Like, God, damn! You know what show I started watching? Which one? The Golden Girls. Hey man, <laughs> the Arthur. I love that show so much. <laughs> so yeah, I'm. I liked. Uh, I like. I've seen Supernatural before, like the first season, and I liked it. I just never like truly got into it. I'm on season one, episode three. Of what? Supernatural. Super. I put it on pause Good four luck. years ago. <laughs> Good luck, man. Yeah, I, I've been watching it. Um, I've decided to take on Law & Order SVU at this point. Oh, Law & Order is awesome, dude. SVU is so good but that's another one dude svu has been going wait wait before i end my segment let's see that's, how long I think 22 seasons now 23 22 oh seasons yeah dude, I'm, on, I'm on season 14 22 seasons 480 episodes holy yeah. yep. and it just got renewed for another year i stopped at season 18 but i watched all that straight through Dude, it's cr- like I love that. It, show. it makes sense because Law and Order, you could just you know, it, it makes sense. They can continuously make you know cases and shit like that. But it baffles me. Like I like Supernatural, but that that shit lasted fifteen years. Yeah. Baffles me, dude. Yeah, it really does for me. I'd, I'd love to get into it just to see how much they took from Buffy. Because like to me, Buffy was like the groundbreaker for. Uh, successful TV, supernatural. No yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, TV shows because, like, watching Charmed, you could definitely tell that they had taken stuff from Buffy as well and kind of made it their own. But when you took away all the aesthetics, it's like, oh, okay, this is basically what it is. But uh, yeah. I liked Buffy better than Supernatural and and Charmed. I like Charmed, but Buffy was way better. But Buffy will always be number one. I don't think Buffy will ever get toppled for me. Like that was just like the trendsetter. And yeah, uh, I'll everything. be honest with you. I've seen very little episodes of Buffy. I just never. It oh, was. Dude. I was too young at the time. Out. So good. I, I, no, so I, good. I'm. It's probably a great show. It's just I was young when Buffy was airing, so it just wasn't on my radar. Unfortunately, maybe one day I will Watch catch. It Season one's a little bit of a grinder. You gotta like push through a little bit because yeah. they didn't think they I were have it on my voodoo account one, but do you really the complete series yeah oh nice <laughs> william's like i'm gonna be watching that now oh Woo! dude i no, i banked on I some of the movies SVU at this point i want to try and get through svu because i've seen all of buffy already so it is not dude you're really gonna watch 22 seasons of svu bro i mean i'm, I'm on season 14 already so i only got like eight more to go i'm past halfway God damn! When did you start? Two years ago, year and a half. Oh, ago. okay. I thought you you were gonna be like, yo, I started like a month ago. I'm like, you fucking. No, 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 no. I I I started and then I stopped and then mm. I forget that they have it. Like they have an entire series on Hulu. Um. So now I remembered and I'm like, oh shit, I can push through a little bit more and then you know All take right. a break, watch something else. But- All right. So that's the end of my segment. I'll continue with my video game and other shenanigans next week stay tuned at this quick break when we come at you with the final segment of our show bald box bald box good luck with ass creed all right guys welcome back for the final segment of our show bald box I have a fantastic discovery that I made. I'll be the judge of that, but yes, go on. This, so this is a movie that it, it needed so much support from so many different companies. I'm going to list off a few of them. Oh, boy. GFA Entertainment, China Film Group Corp, Gap Financing, Russian Film Group, CTB Film Company, Lime Studios, Buffalo 8 Productions, China in, uh, International Pictures, China Sparkle Roll one. Media, Fetish Off Illusions. Can you repeat that one? Fetish Off Illusions. God, that's, that sounds really weird. So Fetish. this is a Russian, Chinese, British film. What the fuck? So there's three languages in the film at all times. It's, How does that work? It stars... Arnold Schwarzenegger and okay. Jackie Chan. Oh, how oh yes. So this movie is called Iron Mask. And this, <laughs> this movie is a fucking train wreck of a movie. But holy shit, it is fun and stupid. And there the the dubbing is so bad. What the fuck is this, dude? <laughs> is Arnold the fucking captain of a ship? Arnold is called Captain Hook. <laughs> <laughs> he is a, he's a British officer. A British officer. In, in... Let, hold on. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger is a British officer. <laughs> In the Tower of London, torturing Jackie Chan. I don't get this shit. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the fucking. The 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 name of this movie is like Vi Two Journey yeah. to China. Yeah, the, the it, it's it's all over the place. This this movie is. It, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just. It's worth it to see Arnold. And Jackie Chan fight each other in the weirdest battle sequence I've ever seen in my life. Why is it weird? It it is fucking bizarre because Jackie Chan has this drunken smile the whole time he's shooting this movie. 
And then there's this whole exchange. It, it's so tongue in cheek that I have to think that this was made for a tongue in cheek movie. Like, it, it, there's no way this could have been a serious film. Like, I, I just I can't believe that it is. Um, there, there's sequence after sequence where it, it's just random shit thrown to the wall. Like, this movie must have been like eight hours long because there's so much shit cut out of it that it makes no fucking sense. I don't even want to boilerplate this movie because it, it doesn't matter. None of the story matters in this. All you do is just watch this ridiculous sequence after ridiculous sequence. And the Jackie Chan battle, um, Arnold is a collector of old items. And it just seems like like the writers of this film decided to choose. They got like a Western history book and chose random names out of it. And they decided to say, oh, this person has this weapon from this. This person. So he collects weapons from all these historical figures. So he's fighting Jackie Chan and he's like, no, no, you can't, you can't use that. That's this guy's sword. And, and Jackie Chan's like, oh, okay. And he puts it right back. And it, it, it's like, you're just like, what? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> but at the same time, it's fucking entertaining, which is bizarre. And then there's, one sequence that I, I just I can't get over this. They assault on a on a castle with umbrellas. Excuse me? They attack a castle <laughs> with umbrellas. <laughs> Fucking Brandon. Excuse me? <laughs> How does that even work? William, have you seen this atrocity? I have seen the previews. I have been I need to see you actually see it. <laughs> Um, it's funny because I actually rented a red box over the weekend. Just, um, that was not available. So I ended up renting, um, Bill and Ted's face to music. Yeah. Um, but I've been like, I saw the previous to this movie and I was just like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> it looks like it's a paycheck. It looks like a paycheck movie, but it also makes you wish that something like this would have been done in their prime to really see the choreography between the big bulkiness that Arnold has always been versus the quick, you know, like speed monster, to put it in those words, <laughs> I, uh, that it, Jackie Chan have always has always been. It's but, just it's it's one of those bizarre things, dude. It really is, and this movie, like bombed so bad the budget was 49 million dollars and it grossed 8 million total worldwide there was no marketing for it. <laughs> i've That's never even incredible. heard of this movie until you mentioned it right now so I, we stumbled across of it because naomi was like it has Arnold and Jackie Chan. That that just that's like a perfect combination. And she brought it home and I was like, okay, that's cool. I hadn't rented a, any Redbox yet for, for this weekend. I, I watched it and I was like, oh my God, this this is a must. This, it's a two out of ten film, but holy fuck, it's enjoyable for what it is. So if you're in the mood for just a balls to wall action movie and just stupid shit, enjoy this. If you're into campy fucking dumb movies action movies this is definitely up your alley and it's well worth the, the two dollar rental for it and just don't think at all turn your brain off drink whatever you need to do to to get intoxicated do it while watching this movie or just have fun with a couple friends bring a couple friends over and make fun of the movie it's well worth it you ain't okay. gonna miss no plot and it, it's it's just gonna be fun all right <laughs> All right, so Lewis, spin. Ah, yes, yes. The spinning shall be commencing. Who is uh, it's William's turn? Or is it your turn, Lewis? Uh, I believe it's Lewis's because like last our last episode we did um the greatest game ever. Oh played. yeah, the greatest game ever played. Yeah, so it is Lewis's turn. Okay. okay, so I am going to spin. I'm just getting my phone ready so I can record. Lord. By the way, really random. Speaking of Chinese, because uh, of Jackie Chan, have you guys seen the movie? It's on Netflix. Over the Moon. It's an animated movie. No, not yet. You've heard of it? 
Nope. Okay. The movie's all right, but it is fucking beautiful. Like, there are sequences where I was like, holy shit, like... It keeps landing on Tearjerker. No, don't do the switch. No, 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 no. Are you serious? This is like the third time. No, God, you suck at this. Naomi, come spin for him. She did. It's 90s movies. Okay. All, All right. right. Mighty Ducks it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I will give you some good 90s movies because I have a list of them on Netflix that I'm like dying to show you guys. And I I'm, think already, you're gonna get a I'm already regretting it. <laughs> okay. Shall. Oh, okay. you shall. All right. Uh, of course, um, check out Lewis's other podcast, The Unknown. Unknown. If you like, you know, conspiracy theories and all that weird shit, definitely go over there. Check that stuff out. Uh, William, do you have anything to plug? Anything special? Um, not really. Just same old, same old. Love each other. Wear a mask. Don't be a douche. Don't be a douche. Don't be a Karen. <laughs> Hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. And um, I'm going to plug my face with more food. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy that turkey. Ew, no. Turkey's horrible. It's the most subpar <laughs> bird out of all of them. All right, guys. And, of course, if you enjoyed our show, visit our sister site, diversitygeek.org, and our brother from another Mr. John over at YouTube at narcotic casserole thank you william thank you very much as always sir thank you thank you thank you lewis thank you brandon cito i am brandon cito and we will see you guys on the next episode of and I'm get it right this time forever. three idiots with a mic <laughs> the drums cue the motherfucking drums <laughs>